Welcome back to Photographing and Communicating with Fairies. Hopefully you've been having some fun going through your photographs and finding fairies within them. Today we're going to talk about a couple of challenges you're going to come across with your photographs and then we're going to have a little bit of eye training just in case you've had some difficulties going through your photographs. If this is the case, no shame in that. It does take time to understand what it is that you're looking for specifically and to train your eyes to spot those things at a 200% increase in photograph size. So the first challenge you're going to run across with people are those who I call Photoshop shouters. When they see a photo that is a little bit different than anything that they've looked at before, the first thing out of their mouth is, it's photoshopped. I find this very interesting because people have a knee-jerk reaction to something that they just can't wrap their minds around. If they don't believe in fairies, or even if they do believe in fairies, the idea of actually seeing one, whether photographed or right in front of their eyes sitting on their nose, they would still have to scream Photoshop because they just can't make themselves believe it's possible. Just like the fairy on the screen here, this is absolutely amazing photograph, but there would be people who would be shouting Photoshop. Though when I've gone and I've looked at Photoshop manipulations that people do, the really cool pictures that they put together and you know make like worlds that are exploding or make fish in a light bulb or you know different things that you can do with Photoshop if you're good at it. I have only seen them use such as the goldfish. They know what a goldfish looks like. They find a photograph with a goldfish and they put that in the photograph of the light bulb with water. Some of the fantasy ones that I've seen, one in particular was a mushroom lit up with a woman smaller than the mushroom, but the woman was obviously a model. I have not seen photographs like this, and I think people would find it hard pressed to find creatures such as this that anybody has photographed. <laughs> so people will shout Photoshop, which is also why it's very important that you keep your original photo safe on a flash drive because if for some reason somebody wants to examine a photograph that you have taken, then they're going to find absolutely nothing that you have done to that photograph other than put it into Photoshop or whatever photo editing program that you have and that you've cropped and enlarged a certain portion of that photograph. They will find absolutely nothing amiss, no layers, no, they're not going to find it. The other thing that you're going to run across is called pareidolia. The scientific meaning is a psychological phenomenon involving an image or a sound which the mind perceives as a familiar pattern of something where none actually exists. Now what that means is that people see images in clouds and wallpaper and carpeting and floor tile of such things as animals or faces or objects. I chuckle at that because I have seen those things since I was a child. I can look at my carpet and I can see a face. I can look at my bathroom rug and I can see a little elf. So this is something that I've been doing all of my life, but I think it also readied me for finding fairies in my photographs, something I never thought of, but it is happening. And you might also be one of those people who can see faces in the clouds or animals in the clouds and in the carpet and floor tile and whatever. It will make it that much easier for you to find fairies in the photographs. But people will call your photographs pareidolia because again, they cannot wrap their minds around the idea that someone could actually genuinely be photographing fairies. So be prepared for those two challenges, depending on what it is you plan on doing with your photographs. Just go on photographing, you know what's real. And like I said, if anyone ever wants to check out one of your photos, then you have the original and they will find absolutely no manipulation to that photograph. So let's move on to the eye training portion. 
I have a number of photos here, and this may take a little bit of time, but I have a number of photos and I've placed them in different categories so that you have the opportunity to see some of what I have photographed, but I've also made sure that I have a labeled picture, at least for a little while, and then I kind of stop labeling for you to give you the opportunity to be able to see for yourself. So let's get started. We're going to start with humans. And I've done pretty much two pictures per category, except for two of them. So we'll start with human. What I've done here is I've taken a portion of the original photograph that had the picture I wanted to use in it, which is why it's in the center. Most of them will be in the center. However, some of them will be off to the side if they were at the edge of the photograph. At any rate, I wanted you to be able to see some of the original photograph as well as the picture that I've cropped. Now, when I say human, we have a woman here, and I've put words here, woman's face, and she is wearing a kind of leaf hat, the way it looks, but we can see her hair and the profile of her face, chin, nose, eyes. Over here, we have the profile of a human baby right here, just the head, and we can't even see the whole head. And then we have another creature here that I believe is holding the baby, and I think that that may be the nanny, the baby's nanny. That's a guess. So anyway, these were found amongst these leaves, and if you look closely, you know, you can also see the shape of her hat. So all I've done is cropped and enlarged here. The next human one, now notice the difference in color between the two of these pictures. Extremely green, very interesting color change. But this was one of those that was interesting too because it was up where I told you never discount doing the upper portion of a photograph and this is why. She was up here and she's actually walking along a branch. Because she was a little bit distant, she doesn't look like it in here, but like I said, this is a smaller version of the original photograph or at least a cropped out portion of it. So she was quite small in the original photograph. So she's more blurred than the last one, but you can definitely see hair, profile, little bow, and her dress as she walks along this branch. Next, we'll go to the human child. And as I told you before, when I was talking about the basic consideration, there are children. And here is one of the children. And you can see her enlarged over here. She looks like a very happy little child. And I always wonder when I see these children in the photographs, where the adults are, <laughs> unless they're hiding or, you know, somebody else is doing child minding for them. But the child is usually the only one I see. So here we have a dark skinned child. She has like a headband and she's wearing a pretty pink dress. Here's a leg and she looks like she might actually be dancing or twirling. So I thought she was pretty cute. And then we have a more grown up human child. And as you can see, she blends very well in this photograph. You look over here, she's a little bit on the blurred side as well, but she's got curly hair. You can see her eyes, dark shirt, arm here, arm here. Here's a skirt, kind of a mini skirt. And she's got one leg here with a shoe and the other one is right here. She's kind of taking a step forward here. And she is also, as you can see, going downhill. So one foot is behind the other. Now don't be afraid to stop this video and take a closer look and, you know, really examine these photographs. Now we're moving on to human-like. And here we have what might be considered a troll. You might miss this very easily because he blends in very well with the logs or the down trees. But if you look over here, his enlarged body, we can see a head. And he is actually wearing glasses. Okay? And his mouth, 
This is his arm. So he's a good size fella if you, you know, look at the size of the arm. And he's also, it appears, he's hairy if you go by the arm. It's very easy to miss ones like this because of coloring. So you really have to sharpen your eyes when it comes to viewing these photos and don't skip, you know, areas that are, I would skip an area like this. That would be way too dark to be able to see anything in it, but this is not. This is light enough that you would be able to recognize a fairy within. The other human like is right here in the photograph and she's very tiny. If you look at the leaves around her, she's super tiny. But over here, she's got very buggy eyes and you can see her hair. And she looks like she's wearing like a halter top and you can see her arm is up across her face. She's wearing a brown skirt and I think she's also dancing. That would be my guess, but I can't tell for sure because the leaves are hiding her legs but the way that her skirt is flared out here gives me the impression that she is dancing or spinning like the baby. Next up is a dried leaf being. And as you can see, and as I've shared with you, you know, don't disregard these kind of dried leaves because you never know what's going to come out of it. And as you can see, I have it circled here. And over here, it is a woman who is standing with her side to us and she's looking down doing some kind of tending I'm assuming to these leaves right here we can see the back of her head and we can just see her nose sticking out here one arm bent and she appears to be wearing a long dress as well the other dried leaf being and again we are amongst a lot of dried leaves here and this one kind of cracked me up because if you take a look at it, he's got his arms straight up in the air, like he's going, hurrah! He's actually enclosed, or at least his head appears to be enclosed in a bubble of some sort. You can see the perfectly rounded part of the bubble here. And then his eye, and his nose, and his mouth, and then the rest of his body here. So he's a unique guy and his hand, here's his other hand. You really can't miss him. So it is incredible what you can find in some of these photographs. Now we're moving on to the flower beings. And I remember telling you that you see these kind of weed flowers, don't disregard them because a lot of times the fairies will use them and shape themselves. And here is a prime example. This woman here looks like she's serving tea or tending something very lovingly. You can see her hair very clearly. She's got very dark eyes, thick eyelashes, her nose, and she's got like the heart-shaped face and high cheekbones and little mouth. She's wearing a black long dress. It's things like this that people really have a hard time wrapping their minds around. Here we have another flower being, and these are those pink clover, I think they're clovers, some kind of, or no, I think this is actually a burdock plant, and before the burdock flowers, and when I came upon this area to take a picture, apparently one of the fairies decided that, oh, I need to take form, take shape. So here we have an eye and a nose and little ears back here. And pretty sure that's a little hand. So again, don't discount these flowers or weeds because they have some pretty interesting fairies within them. Here is a grass being. He is a very unusual looking being, very rounded head you can kind of see he's got a part here and you can see his eyes and his nose almost reminds me of a scarecrow and I think he might be sitting I can't tell for certain and here we have another grass being and you can look at these stalks here of dried grass and you can look at this fairy 
okay? Now, if you look at him enlarged over here, we can see his hair, you can see his eye, and actually, I take that back, you can see his hair. He's got an eye here and an eye here, his nose, his mouth. He's looking right at me as I'm taking this photograph. And here's the rest of his body down here to his feet and his legs. So he's very clear. If you're having a hard time seeing him, step back from your computer or for him, you might even be able to look closer. So here we have green leaf beings. And these are beings that are made of leaves specifically. As you can see here, this was a lot of leaves and it was pretty incredible to go through. And you know, like I said, this is probably maybe a fourth of the actual photograph. So there were a lot more of these leaves <laughs> throughout that picture. And this is the guy that I found in this photograph. And as you can see, he's got wavy hair. His eye is here. He's kind of looking down his nose, his chin with a beard, and he's flexing his muscle here. He's flexing. And his hand comes around here. He's got that in the fist. So he's like flexing his muscles. And I can only see the one arm, but he is very clear. Another green leaf being, and she is partially white as well, but her lower portion is wrapped in like a leaf. And it looks like she's wrapped herself in the flowery weeds for the clothing. So here we have her face. And she's wearing a very fancy hat. She has a pointed ear and looks like dark hair, kind of like a stole type top where she's wearing fur, <laughs> but I don't think it's fur, but that's what it looks like. And then she's got a very slim waist to match her face. And this is the lower portion of her body. This down here is her legs. Now we're going to a leaf being and the leaf beings are actually made up of just one or two leaves, maybe three or four, not a whole bunch of them as seen in the guy who's flexing his muscles. This is one of those that Photoshop would be screamed because if you were to see this out in nature, not sure how you would react, but very clearly this leaf has lips and a nose and an eye with an eyeball. Okay, that is how this picture was taken and it is incredible. Almost looks somewhat cartoony, but it looks just like the leaves around it. You can tell that, you know, this is an actual photograph. And again, if somebody would want to take this photograph and peruse it with a fine tooth comb, put it through every test possible, this would be exactly what they get. There are no layers. There's nothing that they can use to say that, oh, this is fake because it's not. It was an actual photograph. Here is another leaf being, and I call him this because this particular one seems to have wings made of leaves. Here's his head. He's got kind of yellow blonde hair, his eye, his nose, chin, ear, and wings right here. Okay, so now we're moving on to the stick beings. And as you can see, there's a lot of dried sticks, stuff like that, some dried grass here. And hiding in amongst the green is this little guy here. And you can see his eyes, his nose, his mouth, his arm, and then parts of his body. And I think he's a cool little guy. I mean, he's not difficult to see in the photograph when you enlarge him. Pretty amazing. Kind of reminds you of a skeleton, but he's made of sticks. Then we have this stick being here, and she is quite amazing as well. Again, kind of skeleton-like with the big hollow eye, another hollow eye and the nose, 
and you can see her arm. She appears to be wearing a dress. And here's the long legs. Now we're moving on to the tree beings. This one on the screen, I actually found when I was putting this class together. This photograph was taken from Effigy Mounds and I've had it since 2016 along with many other Effigy Mounds photos. And I never saw this. I looked in all over the place and didn't find anything in particular within these leaves or anything like that that I thought. And here I find him. Now we are not labeling this picture because as I said, I just found it as I was putting this class together. But you can see he's got bushy eyes, eyes squinted. Can't really see his nose because the leaf is in the way, but he does have a mustache and a beard. Here's his ear. I don't know if he's wearing a hat or if that's actually what his head looks like. Here's an arm. I don't believe this is another arm, but this one definitely would belong to him. But this is a prime example of what happens when the fairies are out and about and somebody comes along to snap a picture. They can hide in the most amazing ways. I thought he was just a stump and it was brilliant. Then when I was going through the photos for this class, I went, wow, how did I miss him? Because he's incredible. The detail of him is incredible. So moving on, we have another tree being, and this one's quite unique. Easily missed if you're not actually going through the photo bit by bit. But as you can see, he's got a head, kind of a hood, his arms, another hand here, a hand here, long leg, here's a foot, and the other long leg. So he is actually a part of the tree trunk and you can see it's going through him. So that's why I call him a tree being, but you know, when you look at the photograph, you know that he's a part of the tree, but he's not a part of the tree. And here's another very unique tree being amongst a bunch of berries and leaves. And you can see his body trunk <laughs> whatever you want to call it, comes up here. But look at his features. Not only does he have an arm that is waving, okay? Here's his chin, mouth, here's his eye. You can see his ear, top of his head. And that's where that stick ends. He's got a little something on the top of his head, but that's where that stick ends is where he ends. And he's just waving away. It's a pretty cool picture. And last of the tree beings, I found this one quite interesting too, as I don't think that this fairy was actually a part of this tree, but knew how to blend into this tree. And you can see a kind of a pointed hat here, shaped around the face, forehead. The lighter color here, that's the face. You can see the darker eyes, the nose and the mouth and the chin and a part of the body, though you can't really make the body out quite as much. But over here was the clincher. Here is the arm and the hand is lit up by the sun, as in over here, yet there's only just the smallest amount of sun here, but somehow that hand is lit up with what I'm assuming is the sun. But you can see it's outside that stump. So this fairy either leaned up against this stump and knew exactly how to blend in here, or it actually is a part of the stump and can separate itself to some degree. So the next picture is a light being. And these are beings, it's the category I gave to them because to me, it looks like they are made out of light. Now, if you look around at what she's walking through, she stands out very clearly. And to me, she reminded me of a nun wearing like a nun's habit and the long, long dress. 
Here is also a very unique light being, and you can see that she's, her legs, if that's what you can call them, come down to a point onto the ground, but she's not totally straight. If she's a light beam, she's not totally straight. She actually has a butt, a waist. Here's her upper body. She's got kind of reddish hair, reddish brown hair. We can see a bit of a profile of her face and she's wearing like a little pointed hat. This is a very incredible photograph and probably not something that I will ever photograph again. Now we're moving to animals, and if you look here, it appears we have a miniature dinosaur. Right here is his tail, his back, his leg, his other leg, neck, here's the head, and he is just cruising along this log. And as far as I know, there is no animal in Iowa that looks like this. Another animal here, this is... I think a horse. All I have is the head and the neck, but as you can see, we have the eye, we have the nose, we have the mane, and we have the neck. Interesting colored horse, but still, can't really miss it as a horse. So when it comes to animals, don't be surprised at what you find in a photograph. There are many, many different kinds, and if they are small, as this one obviously is, then you know that it's a fairy animal of some sort. If you take a picture and you have a full-size fox, then obviously you know that's real wildlife, our size. But don't discount the animals. We also have what I call creatures. And when I say animals and creatures, animals to me would be like cats, dogs, horses, cows, pigs, that kind of thing. When I say creatures, I'm talking about unfamiliar, more fantasy type looking creatures. And here we have a bunch of leaves and this little guy would have been easy to miss, except for he does kind of stand out because of the light. And as you can see, he has a face. There's a nose, an eye, chin. Here's like a hood. And then Kind of, he looks kind of dressed up actually, but he's got a shell and here's like the underbelly. Now this is not like any bug I've ever seen. I've never really seen a bug with a human type face. So this was interesting. And then occasionally you'll run across creatures you maybe would rather not know existed. I mean, he looks like a scary little guy, but he's pretty little, so I highly doubt he's going to be able to harm you in any way. So here's his eyes and his nose, and you can kind of see his mouth, and then one arm, and the rest of his body is kind of hidden behind the tree. We can't really see feet or anything, but we definitely can see an ear and more f poofy hair. So he's a hairy fella. Oh, I take that back. I guess we can see toes here even toenails. So as you can see, creatures to me are the rather unusual ones. Now the last thing I'm going to show you are some oddities that you may come across in your photographs as well. This was again effigy mounds and you can see that it is a very leaf filled area, at least portions of the woods. In this one, not only did I find kind of a dwarf looking guy over here, which I did not enlarge for you here, but little houses on the log. Here's the tree, here's a log going across. These little houses were sitting right on top of the log here. Obviously I did not see them with the naked eye while I was taking the photograph, but you can't miss them in the photo. So if we look over here, they've got roofs dark green ones. Looks like a chimney and white houses. Can't really see doorways or anything, but maybe they're on the other side. I don't know, but pretty unique photo. Then occasionally you run into oddities like the front of a car. I have more than just this one in mechanical type things within 
my photographs right down to something that looks like a little child riding in a bullet almost with a helmet and everything on and another one where the tree is shaped kind of like a ship or at least a branch coming off and there's little ones playing in there. I have a tractor and a few other other interesting mechanical type things that most people wouldn't think would be a part of the community of fairies but apparently they are. So here we have a windshield, we have a headlight, we have a bumper, we have a tire here, maybe an antenna. Only part of it is showing because of the leaves so somebody tucked it in there and that's where it's supposed to be. And here we have a very dark portion of a photo. Very beautiful flowers here. Mustard flowers maybe. But we have a dark portion of the photo here. But I was able to see when I blew it up a little bit that there's like color in there. A little bit of color. So I cropped it out and here's what we see. We have two buildings here. There is a roof and a red side of a building and here's another roof here's a leaf but this roof actually comes like this and then there's a stem in the way and you can see a little bit of the red here and a little bit of the red here for a taller building so you never know what you're going to find but normally I wouldn't look in a dark area like this so closely but this little red part really caught my eye and I'm glad I did look. So the last photograph I'm going to show you is a door. Last thing I thought I would ever find while out taking pictures and this was taken at Red Rock Lake in Iowa and I didn't notice it obviously when I was out taking photographs. I really love to take photographs of downed trees and I just think it's such a cool look. And this was an old tree as well. When I got home and went through my photographs, I found this little door. And anybody can tell me that that's not a door. That's just the bottom of a tree. But you know what? I believe it's a door. It's what it looks like to me, and that's what I'm going to go by. But this is another one of the oddities. You just never know what you're going to find in your photographs. So I hope you are very much enjoying this class and enjoying looking through the photos. I know it's a lot of time consuming work, but for me, it is also very relaxing and not stressful. If you just need a way to chill, this is a great thing to do. So it's time to start the next portion of this adventure and we will be moving on to the lessons on communicating with fairies in your photos. See you there.